you here. We got several visitors, and we give a warm welcome to you and to all your mothers uh, that are here. Happy Mother's Day to you. Mm -hmm. We are so glad that you've come to celebrate God's love and goodness. A couple of announcements. Uh, if you're a part of the trustees, uh, they meet this Tuesday night at 6 o'clock in the activities room. And next Sunday, we'll be celebrating uh, Baccalaureate Sunday uh, with our high school and college graduates. And the, the Methodist men are, going, are, are sponsoring a uh, graduate breakfast next Sunday. And uh, those who can attend, you need to please call the church office and RSVP so they will know how, uh, how much to prepare. And that's for the whole family, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that starts today on Mother's Day is our Baby Bottle Blessing campaign. It starts today and goes through Father's Day. There's baby bottles in the narthex and out here on the educational wing, and it is to support the Promise Ministry. It's a pregnancy care ministry, and we've been a part of this for a number of years but if you'll pick up your bottle and add your coins or your dollars or your check, then uh, we'll collect them on Father's Day. So thank you for your involvement in that ministry. We have some beautiful flowers on the table, and they're placed here in honor of the Tisdale family by the Children's Ministry. And uh, they'll be coming in just a moment to uh, join the church and to baptize uh, their two children. And we're excited about the decisions that they have made. In your bulletin, you have found an insert, I hope, uh, it's called the Sunday Fun. And each Mother's Day, our church is throughout the state of Mississippi receive an offering, a love offering. And what makes this nice is that you can send this in by yourself. You don't have to uh, uh, give your money to the church unless you want to. If you're giving a check for a Sunday fund, please mark that uh, for a Sunday fund and make the check out to uh, First United Methodist Church. But I encourage you to look at this, read it carefully. We have seniors up and down the state of Mississippi uh, who are uh, parishioners in our retirement homes. And oftentimes... Uh, Sometimes those folks, uh, some of those folks don't have quite the resources uh, that they need to be able to stay there. And so the United Methodist Church, because we are connected uh, in every way, uh, we receive a love offering, and that love offering uh, helps so many people. So we invite you mm -hmm. to participate in that. For, all, for those of you who have not seen Wanda Beersdorf, she's sitting right here up on the corner and we haven't seen her since she moved, so it's a wonderful day to have her back. I know Jamie's got a couple announcements for us. Good morning. All right. Uh, there will be no youth tonight for Mother's Day, so you have to spend time with your mom. Mm -hmm. um, and then Brother Jim <laughs> already, uh, already was talking about the baccalaureate breakfast next Sunday at 830 um, if we're, we're still trying to get a count, uh, the Methodist men is putting it on again. Just let me reiterate, we need to know by Tuesday morning if you plan on coming. So please RSVP, um, wh whether you're a college graduate or a high school graduate. But again, it is for the whole family. But please let us know by Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Let's invite uh, the Lord to be present with us through the power of his Holy Spirit on this Sunday we call Mother's Day. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the enormous love that you shower your children with. We thank you today especially for our mothers who helped us at an early age or maybe even at a later age to, to realize the importance of that love and the grace that we've come to know through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, our worship is all about you, and we do give you thanks for the mothers who raised us and 
shared their faith with us and encouraged us uh, along our journey to always look to you, Lord, for the things that we need. So come, we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you guys sure you got this? Yeah. We're the plug in. Maybe it's a suit. How hard can this get? We're men. Besides, I bump into Chuck Norris at a pizza at once. I think his powers rubbed off on me. Get out of here. Go on and enjoy your mommy getaway weekend. Oh, uh, this weekend was a bad idea. the same. This is a joke. Guys, 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 it's like the Sahara in this cup. Can somebody give me this some juice? <laughs> and listen, Paul, no Paul, doesn't make a difference to me. You're the one selling with the diaper. Oh, God, She says 
she misses you. And she realizes how important you are in her life. She has an eye to it. And she knows that she can't make it without you. He's seven. Well, what in the world would we do without our mothers? And the love and the grace and the discipline and everything else they share with us to make us what God wants us to be, his child. We hope you enjoyed that, and we'll be sharing other things on this special morning we call Mother's Day. Paul? Let's join together and invite God to be here with us this morning. If you want to use your hymnal, it's number 400 in your hymnal. Let's rise. <laughs> That's a blessing.
Let us remain standing as we affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
This is a, a special moment for this church as Derek and Candace Tisdale are bringing their children Addison and James Davis for Christian baptism and Derek and Candace are also moving their membership and becoming a part of this church family this morning. So I invite the family, the friends, uh, anyone who would like to come and surround Derek and Candace and their children to come at this time. And I also invite our smaller children to come and find their place right here. Would you come? I invite you to the congregation to take your hymnals and turn to page 39 for this baptismal service. And Addison and Davis's godparents, Chuck and Amanda Minga, are here. We're glad to have them with us as well. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without Christ. This morning we present to the Lord and uh, to this congregation through the Fisdale family Addison and Davis for baptism. And before they come, I uh, want to ask Derek and Kansas, Candace, as they are becoming uh, part of this church, uh, these questions, but I also ask these questions on behalf of your children as well. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord? in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And will you nurture your children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example that they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? And to the congregation, I ask this question. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Jesus Christ? We do. Will you nurture this family in the Christian faith and also one another in faith and life and include these two children and their parents uh, before you in your care? Let's help. Peace, and we will live according to the examples of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in the first service of others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in a way that leads to life. And then to join us on page 41 for the thanksgiving of the water. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all, all the, the earth. earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus. Nurtured in the water of a womb, he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and for these children who will receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Addison Nicole, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work in your life so that you will become a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Y'all pray because I get ready to wake him up. <laughs> James David Sisdale, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work in your life as you become a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Jerry, I'm going to give James Davis to you and Christina, if you will take Addison and y'all introduce Addison and Davis to the church. Now, Brother Jim, we can't have this sleeping in church business going on. <laughs> Davis, this is the this is the height of attention. Now but he's just gonna sleep right on through it. <laughs> what you don't see, but you'll know, is your family has just expanded a whole bunch. <laughs> and Addison, too. God has given Derek and Candace two special gifts. He's blessed their home. And with God at the center, it'll be a happy home. Now, Sherry, I promised you'd bring the kids back. Oh. <laughs> Whew, that's the longest walk I've taken in a while. <laughs> Look at this sweet little fella. This is Davis, and this is your family, your church family who will have promised to nurture you and come alongside, encourage your faith, Pray for you and for Addison. Yeah. <laughs> He's not budging a bit. I think Mama gave him a sleeping pill. <laughs> well, one day you'll know because your mom and daddy will tell you how special this day is for you and Eddie. We love you. Let us pray. Lord God, children are such a precious gift 
from you. And we celebrate with the Tisdale family this morning, their family and friends that have joined them and this church family as well. And we ask that you will continue to pour out your Holy Spirit on Addison and David and on mom and dad as well, and on all of us, because we are all your children. Bless them as they go, as they grow, and as they journey with you. And we ask these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Ladies, stand please at this time so the children can identify you. Will all ladies stand, not just mothers, but God has given us as ladies the gifts of nurture, and we want to honor that this morning. We'd like to invite our ushers to come forward now as we share in the giving of our tithes and offerings.
Lord, this is a special day as we honor those who have stood in and, and exemplify, exemplified your love to us. Thank you for mothers. Thank you for the many blessings that you share with us. And for the, the blessing of receiving, we too give out of the heart of love. Lord, bless these offerings, these tithes, that your kingdom may be grown and accomplished. For it's in your holy name we pray. Amen.
Thank you. You may be seated. We invite the community of faith to a call to prayer this morning. As you consider the names on the back of your bulletin, <clears throat> we're invited to pray for these who are counting on our prayers in behalf of their need. Also, um, note that you are invited to pray daily for the church. And see to it that no one misses the grace of God. This is our admonishment. We want to um, remember Sue Lash this morning, as she's not able to be with us. She had a shoulder replacement this Wednesday, so she'll be recovering at home. Uh, <clears throat> We also had a request to pray for the Carol and Carson family in, in the loss of their loved one. We certainly want to remember uh, the families from Hattiesburg this morning that suffered loss of life um, and undergird them with our prayer and intercession for them. Let us take this time to commune with our Heavenly Father. We'll ask Virginia to lead us in these moments together. Father, what a privilege it is to come and worship you in truth and in spirit this morning. You have promised your presence with us as we gather in your name. And you desire nothing more than a relationship with you in which we commune together heart to heart minute by minute thank you Lord for your great love and mercy shown toward us even though we failed to live up to your expectations we pray that by your grace and mercy, you'll forgive us. And may we turn and draw closer to you that we may remain strong and pure and holy for you. Father, we're in need of your healing for those who are suffering from pain physically, pain emotionally, For those that are grieving the loss of loved ones, Lord, we just need you. We need healing in our churches, in our communities, and in our nation. May we humble ourselves, Lord, and earnestly seek your face for the days ahead. You alone are our refuge and strength. Thank you, Lord, that we know that you pray for us. Jesus prayed for his disciples to remain faithful and strong in spirit and ready to represent you in all our, their ways. And you've given us your prayer to help us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
I want to use the scripture this morning from the sixth chapter of Luke. Uh, it's uh, probably a little bit unusual for a Mother's Day sermon, but if you'll hang with me, I think we can tie all the loose ends together. We are celebrating Mother's Day, and as Dr. Paul said, we, I, I pray all of us will take time and give thanks for our, our families this week. But this morning, I want to talk to you about building a Christian home, maybe from a mother's point of view. Our text does come from the sixth chapter of Luke's Gospel. Jesus has been teaching uh, three, using three different parables. And as he gets to this last parable, he says there is only one way to build a house that will stand up to a storm. You have to dig down deep and lay a foundation on a solid rock. Hear God's word for us this morning. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He's like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck the house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus is talking about building the foundation, not only of our homes, but of course of our lives as well, and to build it on the rock of his word. What a better place for that foundation to be built within the family. And it is normally the mother's teachings that are the key to this foundation. But of course, dads are always welcome to share in that as well. Now, I've used this illustration, I think, at least once, maybe twice in the years that I've been your pastor. And I want to share it again. It was one of the best books that I read in seminary, and it was written by Robert Futrum, who entitled the book, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Listen to the part of his wise words. He writes, Wisdom was not found at the top of graduate school, at the top of the graduate school mountain, but rather in the sand pile at Sunday school and at home and in the kindergarten. These are the things that I learned at an early age through my mother and through other teachers that God provided. First, share everything. Play fair. Don't hit other people. I had to remind my two-year-old of that yesterday. Put things back where you got them. Clean up your own mess. Don't steal. Say you're sorry when you hurt someone. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush. Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Take a nap every afternoon and be aware of the wonders of God's world, especially the things that you can plant and harvest. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but I think those are really good suggestions for building a firm foundation for our family And as I read Futurum's words again, I thought how different this world would be 
if we would put some of his suggestions into practice, and certainly how different this world would be if we put Jesus' words into practice. I wonder if our government has a, a policy to always put things back where they found them while cleaning up their own messes. Well, that's just a thought. <laughs> Building foundations for our children is vital if they are to succeed in life in the way that God desires. As I think about the lessons that my mom taught and the ones that Madge is still teaching our children, ages 36 and 32, And also, as she teaches our grandchildren, I believe there are at least three things that go into making up a, a firm foundation for a Christian home. First is make love. Now, some of you, I know, thought I was, think that I'm really thinking about sexual love, but I'm not. But that's okay. Sexual love is a gift from God. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be here if my parents hadn't engaged in sexual love. <laughs> but what I'm really speaking about this morning is when a mother makes love the central part of her family and her child and children's life. Now, it's not just mothers who do that or who need to do that, we all need to do that. But it does seem that most godly mothers do very well in that area of raising their children. I know that there are exceptions to that rule. When love has been wounded in any way, God gives a mother the ability to bring healing to that child by sharing their unconditional love with them. Well, maybe when love is fading or absent from a child's life, a godly mother finds ways to restore that and to strengthen that love through her care. So here's a question for all of us to think about on this Mother's Day. What are the corners in our homes where we need to make love an absolute? Secondly, Firm foundations occur when we make believe. And we help turn that belief into faith. A minister once said that the world does not lack for wonder, but only for the sense of that wonder. I believe most mothers do a great job in helping their children to see the things that we adults often forget. I thought about that as we were watching mom goggles and dad were, the dads were seeing things in a different, totally different way than what they were used to seeing. Helping our children to see God through a wildflower or God through these absolutely beautiful flowers here on the table. To be able to hold the world in the palm of their hands and celebrate that goodness of God our creator. To see the beauty of the world around them by simply opening up their eyes and taking time to see all the lovely things that God has created. And maybe their response would be, wow. I don't know about you, there have been times in my, in my own life when I needed to sit down and just explore and think about the wonders of God. I remember one day early in my ministry, uh, things were not going well, and I was even contemplating uh, getting out of the ministry when a, a, a small little girl came and she climbed up into my lap she said, Daddy, tell me about Jesus. You know him, don't you? Mama knows him. 
And I heard God say to me at that moment, Jim, this is as close as I'll ever be to you. And I didn't know, as our children were going to Sunday school and church, as Madge was taking them, I didn't know that God was going to use my children to move me back into the, to the church so at a later date I might hear the call that he placed on my life. That little girl's name is Lindy, and now she has a seven-year-old and a, five, a two-year-old and a seven-month-old. And life is busy. She's an English teacher, high school English teacher. I don't know how she does it. But I used to watch Madge with our children, and I, I wish I'd had had some goggles on. <laughs> every day, every night, we should give thanks for our mothers, those that have gone on to be with the Lord and those mothers who are still with us at this time. And finally, a firm foundation for building a Christian home does not only involve making love and make believe, but also making hope. Is there anything that is needed by us any more than hope? And especially children. We all need it. I told you before that I am a historian of sort, uh, especially as it related to the 1930s and moving forward, especially with emphasis on World War II. I remember reading a story that came out of the early years of World War II from Poland as Hitler and his German troops made their way through that country, ravaging it, burning the Jewish cities and villages and towns down to where there was nothing left. And on this one village, they, they did exactly that. There was nothing left but just a few little pieces of wood standing. And the day that they left, an old Jewish merchant made his way out into the street. And all you could smell was blood and smoldering ash. And slowly, this old man walked back to where his market had been. And one of the younger boys that was out in the street said, Hey, old man, what in the world are you going to sell? He just turned and looked back and he said, Hope. Hope. Millions of people are selling all sorts of things in this world, spending millions of dollars to get us to buy the products that they sell. But where are those people who are trying to give hope away? I pray that we find those people in the church. I pray that we find those people in the Christian homes, mothers and fathers who are sacrificing and giving of themselves to teach their children the faith that will lead them to Jesus Christ. The family needs to be the setting where hope is cultivated, transmitted from one person to the other. And as our children are offered hope, then the church comes alongside to strengthen their little faith. That's just what took place this morning as the Tisdale children were baptized and we made promises to that family that we would help them in growing their children up in the Christian faith. Loving their kids and teaching them how to respect and love others. Helping their kids to understand where faith comes from as they wonder about God and his world. And to kindle hope in their young life. So how do we build a home with a firm foundation that will withstand the storms of life? We make love. We make believe. And we make hope. 
Henry Ward Beecher once said, the mother's heart is the child's classroom. That is certainly still true to this day. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. And may God give you the strength and the patience and the love and the grace to share with your children. Let's pray. Lord, you have blessed us in so many wonderful ways. You've invited us to come to know your son, Jesus Christ. And he has invited us to come to know him as Lord and Savior. And that surely that is the greatest blessing that you've shared with your children. But also, Lord, you've shared with us the love of a mother and how that love and faith and hope that Paul spoke about as he wrote to the church at Corinth has touched and influenced so many of our lives today. And I pray, Lord, that that same love and faith and hope will continue to nurture every child's life so that they may know you, Lord Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. Thank you, and may we celebrate our mother's love, not just today, but each and every day, as we give thanks for all that they have shared and all they are still sharing with us today. And we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand and sing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, 384 in your hymnal. celebration. We're going to celebrate Jesus' ascension back into heaven because that is the one thing that allowed the Holy Spirit to come and to lead us and to guide us and direct us. And if we're sharing that, we're going to have a word for our graduates who are getting ready to enter one of the most exciting and also one of the most dangerous times in their lives. 
So we want to encourage them as they go off, as they start a new job, to always take Jesus Christ with them. Don't leave home without it. We invite you to share and take hands as we sing about God's peace. Yeah. 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 Yeah.